beginners. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, and that's, you know, obviously why one of the other reasons I decided to do this and it, a lot of it was because, you know, owners are saying, Hey, we don't have enough curriculum. What are we going to do? We have all these great classes and not enough projects. So that's obviously one of the components of the hip stitch Academy and why I launched that. Um, we were just talking about, you know, beyond the community that we're creating, it's also the curriculum and, um, you know, and I'm open to what you want as well. You know, like I do obviously some other classes here in Hoboken that we didn't target when we were, you know, working on the So Fun curriculum. And one of the things that Lacey has asked that I create is a pre-K and kindergarten curriculum. Um, and so I put that on my schedule and I'm actually going to add some of that age group to the schools that I'm already in, which is a great, um, I'm realizing a great way to get a second day at a school because there aren't a ton of programs for the PK, the pre-K and K, um, age group. Um, so I've been reaching out to the schools that I've been first, I do first through sixth grade usually at the schools. Um, so adding that pre-K and kindergarten component has been, um, I think is going to be really good. And there's going to be a curriculum developed for that because Lacey asked for it. And now I have to teach it as well. So I kind of have to get my act together and <laughs> create something to teach, but it's good, you know? And then Joanne and I had talked last week um, about, you know, how to teach the adults. And that's something I've done longer than I've taught kids. Um, so that's something that will be developed. Well, it's, it's a class that I teach. I've probably taught for the last 10 years and it's just the beginner sewing boot camp, and it's kind of like a 15 hour class that I used to teach. It used to be 16 hours. I would teach it two hour classes for eight weeks. And then because I wanted to be able to teach more during the year, I turned it into two and a half hours on weeknights and three hours if it's running on a Saturday morning. Because that's a big time for us people. It was usually 10 to 12 and now I'm doing it from 9 to 12. On a Saturday morning, I find that, you know, people that are willing to get up at 10 for a sewing class will get up at 9. And then you can run the class for five weeks and run second one after that you know what I mean it's we were just looking at the calendar and if you're running it for 16 or for eight weeks you couldn't run as many so that was kind of more of a business decision and also uh once people are in there they don't want to leave they they get to you know it's 12 o'clock and we're like trying to kick people out the door because we do kids classes at 12 on Saturdays so anyway that class um I'm going to turn that into an actual curriculum that you all will be able to teach. Um, it's like a beginner sewing for adults. So those are two things. If you've got other things that you're like, hey, I'd really love this or I'd really love that, you know, I'm open to all of that. So um, let's see. What else is. Um, well, let me just talk about the, the Houston thing. I think, um, you know, I think it's hard for Joanne. She's obviously in Ireland and it's kind of last minute. Um, but that kind of thing where we're going to get together, I'd like to do it, you know, once a year. So um, we are getting together on October 28th and 29th during Quilt Market in Houston just because it's a, so, it's a big um sewing industry event. So I think there will be a lot of teachers, a lot of sewing studios, um, and we'll do a little, you know, networking event. We can all hang out and have dinner and then um, a workshop during one of the days that we're there. And then hopefully we'll be able to attend some of the workshops that go on during Quilt Market. Um, some more sewing. I actually I was looking at them and a lot of them are business related too, which is great. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the classes are. Um, anybody want to say anything about that? Lisa, you've been to Quilt Market. Do you want to say anything about Quilt Market? It's never, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It is, it is unbelievable. It is more than you could. I mean, I think the, the exciting thing for me was just to see 
I mean, all the people you hear about actually hands-on teaching you techniques and classes, and they debut all the new lines of fabric. And, um, you know, I actually, I learned a whole lot. It's a lot of fun, but it was, a you know, and just new products that you can incorporate. And um, it was great. I can't, I can't, it was very crowded, though. <laughs> but it's great. And other than the fact that I'm going to fly to Atlanta to get to Houston, that's a little bit puzzling. Is that out of the way? I can't even think of how. Oh, yeah, totally. You can't drive? <laughs> how far is it to drive to Houston? It's is about it? nine hours. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I so I may be able to find a flight to Dallas and connect there, but it's, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, yeah, but it'll be good. Mm -hmm. And Caitlin, you're going to drive? I think I'm going to drive, yes. So I can bring whatever, you know, if we need some sewing machines and fabric and all that, I don't mind at all packing that up because, I mean, it's like four hours from me, but I don't, you know, I just don't mind it. Okay. Oh, the sample sale is awesome. Ooh, I signed up for that. So did I. Yeah, yeah that is crazy awesome. Okay, good. All right, awesome. Well, next time, Joanne, you're coming too. Next year. <laughs> yeah, next year. We'll do it again. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that is that. What else? Um, add yourself to the directory on the Hip Stitch Academy if you don't mind. I just want to kind of start getting that out there because I think as you know, people add themselves and more people will add themselves. So that's just kind of a request that I have. If you can put yourself on there, that would be awesome. Um, and I will, just because I've worked with all of you, um, probably be reaching out for some testimonials, if you don't mind. Um, only because it's a good thing to add to the site and you all know um, who I am and what I do. And hopefully you can say some nice things um, <laughs> about my me and my business to help. I'm going to keep this going, so that would be awesome. Um, but that's all I really have. Um, is anybody, we were just kind of talking about staffing a little bit before you came on the call, Lacey, and I know that's always, um, you know, the one of the hardest parts about doing this. Are there other things that have come up that people want to talk about and maybe we can bounce ideas off of each other? Um. Staffing, I mean, I, I know you said you talked about it. That's a huge concern of mine. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting into are things like, you know, I pay $35 a class for a lead teacher for sewing. And they think that for mm -hmm. their, their class, I mean, like if the class starts at three, they think that's from three to four. So I'm having to come up with now that we've grown so much standard procedures of how much time does that include? Like how much of the setup time is included within that pay? At what point do they, they bill me more for the time? Because we have schools where they can't get in the school. Like if they, we have a class that starts at three o'clock. There's one school, if they're not in the parking lot by 2.20, they can't get in there. So technically they're in the school really two hours instead of the hour that I'm paying them to teach. So coming up with standard, and I'm having to do this with bricks as well, is coming up with standard rules about you're paid $35 a class, how much time does that include, and very specific in terms of what preparation is, is done for them and what is required for them to teach. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, as I was hearing that, yeah, that's, that's a hard one to swallow that if you're, they're there from sort of like, I don't know, for me, setting up at a class in a school, we're typically there 10 minutes before it starts because we're not allowed in any earlier. So the setup is pretty uh, bare bones. Usually it's like if they can get in there 10 minutes, set up machines. And then as kids are filtering in, they're still setting up and kind of going. There's just not you know, any of the prep work was done before they walked in. I guess if I had a school where I had to be there or I had to have them there 40 minutes before, I would, <laughs> I would come up with something else for them to do in those 40 minutes. Like, you know, somehow, I don't know if you can incentivize them to, to cut patterns or create samples for you or something that you would need done in that time and then give them a little bit of extra money to make their 
time worthwhile. So I don't know if that makes any sense for what you're doing, but that's definitely what I would do because it's 40 minutes. Well, and in, in terms of that too, like I, I just encourage like Joanne, if he's just getting started, be very clear with your expectations because I felt like in the beginning I tried to overstaff in a hope to make the learning curve easier. Well, they became very dependent on that level of help. And so I, I say give everybody the tools and clearly define the expectations. And I've worked really hard. Like last year I kept adding kids in classes because you want everybody to participate. So what I did this year was with a teacher, um, I give one teacher – six to eight children, but most of my schools have 12 children enrolled, and that's with two teachers. And I've worked really hard not to go over that 12 number because then they become frustrated and it's, it's not a good thing. Um, but just I think for me what I'm trying to do is very much, and I, this is not my nature because I just assume everybody's going to do the right thing, but I'm having to very much standardize procedure and clearly define expectations and, and what – so if people, you know, I'm getting, they'll, I'll say, can you work this? And they're like, well, what am I getting paid? And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I've already paid well. I've always paid well. So just that's probably my two cents as far as um, what I've really learned over the last year with my staff. And I'm, I'm short teachers. I, it's very hard to find the right people to do this. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I've definitely been struggling um, with staffing as well and honestly I kind of got into a bad habit like I was doing all the prep for everything in the beginning mm -hmm. and so they weren't used to prepping I mean I was doing it out of my house I kind of enjoyed doing the prep and so I got into that as a habit and so when I started to yeah. ask them to do prep they were expecting to get paid for it so I was paying them hourly to do prep mm -hmm. and it was bonkers they were just like taking they were so slow doing the prep and it was costing me so much money and so I actually pay now $45 a class which it kills me, but at the same time, it's a full class, you know, and they're doing everything. Like, I'm not doing a dang thing. They're going to come to my Well, and does that whenever, include, you know, when we get the studio, they're going to get everything. They're going to do everything. <laughs> and it's a lot of money, but um, also for us, we drive a whole lot. I mean, yeah, I was just going to say, we're super mm -hmm. spread out. And so I just think that, I think that that's fair, though. 45, I think, is feeling okay. Yeah, I don't think that's. And are there two teachers in the class or one? Um, what we're doing is we're doing an eight, uh, kiddo maximum. And so it's one teacher. And if there's additional kids, we're doing an entirely separate class instead of putting them together. Cause the energy level has been really hard for us to deal with. Like getting so many kids together, no one is really getting the quality with some of the age groups. Like we have a lot of kids that are maybe first and second grade. And so it's just too loud for anyone to learn anything. And so we just split them into a completely different classroom. Yeah, I think that, that that's what I've always done as well. If it's more than eight, it's either try to get another class going or you turn them away and say, well, we'll be running this in the winter. Hopefully you can get in that time, you know? And it, I think that mentality too is like, it's creating, um, you know, a little bit of excitement about getting in the next time around. I feel like sometimes when I do, a school and it, I end up doing like 16 kids, two classes the next time around, I, you know, especially if it's a small school, maybe they want to break and they all want to take hip hop the next time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not teaching a class. Whereas I'd rather teach, you know, eight kids fall, winter, spring and have the consistency and have new kids moving through and having them, you know, take it in the fall maybe and come back in the spring or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think turning the ones away and, and the whole idea of only having the one teacher, it, it's okay in the schools because there's teachers everywhere, you know, it's like if they've got to go to the bathroom, I don't have to take every kid with me like I do it where my studio is. I have to, if there's only one in there, we all have to go together. Whereas at a school, there's teachers in every classroom. You're not really alone. You know, if there was an emergency, there's teachers, there's nurses, there's administrators everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's what's Megan. Hey Megan, I, um, I'm dealing with a competitor now though. So if I turn people away, they're going somewhere else. 
Yeah, but you know what, Lisa, you can't, I honestly, the whole competition thing, and I know you're probably sick of me saying that, but like, you've got better classes, you're going to have better classes, and there's always going to be something that's competing. If, if it's not sewing, it's, you know, it's gymnastics, or it's soccer, or it's hip hop, or whatever it is. You know, I just don't think that you should go beyond what makes a good class. Because for me, if I let nine kids in that class, it's completely different if there were eight kids. And then the nine kids have a bad experience versus the one kid that turned away and maybe took something else. I don't know. Do you, um, do you have, okay, and I'm, I don't mean to monopolize the conversation, but I'm just kind of intrigued by this, but like for me, in terms of giving up a teacher for that amount of time, are you able to make the numbers you want if you just have eight? Yeah, I do. I mean, I pay for eight kids, I pay $40 and that's all the prep. That's everything. I don't do anything for that class. It's $40. And if I'm charging 17 to $18 a kid, yeah, it's, it's worth it for me. I mean, I don't, you know, know what, what you need to make in a class. But for me, if I've got, you know, 20 classes going on in a week, that's pretty good. Even if I've got 10 so, classes. And you have the number of teachers you need to do that. No, I'm always looking for new good teachers. I, you know, and I had someone come in and a shadow a class while we were in summer camp and you know, part of me is like, oh, I should give her a class. And part of me is like, oh, she's not that great. So I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm always <laughs> looking for good people. I don't know. I just didn't get the greatest feeling from her. But at the same time, you know, if it's a question of, I think what I'm going to do is I might say, come teach this class with me. And then I'm going to go a few times with her and see how it goes. And if she's horrible, then, you know, I'll continue doing it myself and or find somebody else I don't know okay uh, and one so more question huge. Huge. <laughs> what well it's just so huge like finding the right person and I'm running into this you know I've never done this before and you think you know having a business you know working with staff and stuff and um I've had to really work on you know who we need to be as a company and what we need to do at our birthday parties and that my expectations of people because I have to trust people to go into people's homes on a special occasion, yeah, yeah. work someone's birthday party. It is so stressful for me. Yeah, because, that's gotta be. You know, their little attitudes can be so crappy. And um, so I'm going to have to really get on top of that because I got some feedback that was negative and it just made me want to cry. It was uh, my staff was like, you know, just not being respectful and not, you know, being bubbly and happy and all this. So that's another thing I'm having to work on more so at the birthday parties. Classes, I will, but Caitlin, I will tell you this. And what the so fun face needs to look like. <laughs> Caitlin, I will tell you that I did this training that really, that really helped me a lot on defining expectations. I had a, a employee that was sarcastic and she thought it was funny. And so what I was able to do was I, I explained like we're courteous and, and Megan's laughing because she's met her. But it was well, so I wasn't simple. Sure that was her, but yeah. You what? I wasn't sure that that's who you're talking about, but but I'm also laughing because I get it. It's like you can't be sarcastic because no, get it. Like well, you especially me, you but... you saw the class where she taught. Like these kids, they were so sheltered, and you know, and so I did this training on quality service through Disney, and their big thing was. You provide quality service through the people that work for you and defining how their behavior, what it means to your organization is key. So for me, like with her, I had to sit down and say, okay, at Bricks and So Fun, we are courteous. What does courteous mean? It means you walk in the building and you smile. It means you say hello. It means you call a child by name. I mean, it was, I felt so stupid saying it, no. but at the end of the day, she had to hear what it meant to us to be courteous. Like, how did I define her behavior in relation? Like, she can go out anywhere else she wants, but when she's wearing my shirt and I say be courteous, that means you smile, you call a child by name, you talk to people. And so I had to define what that meant, which was shocking to me. Shocking. Well, I, before you got on, Joanne and I were just talking about that. It's like scary when I show up on, you know, weeks that I'm not teaching and I show up at my studio and I'm there for like drop off 
and kids will walk in the room and no one says hello to them. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh my God, why do I have to have a talk about this? Like you see a kid mm -hmm. walk into camp, they're scared, they're nervous, they don't know anybody and there's nobody there saying, hey, John, or what up, Susie, welcome to camp, you know? And oh, Yo, I can't. And I have now a teacher that smells bad. Like, how do you go there? Yeah, seriously. It just never oh, ends. Man. Well, and you know, mm -hmm. it's crazy. The birthday parties too, like something, this is just my thing. Maybe I need to let some of this stuff go, but like the second the kids are done with their projects, people are breaking down, down the tables, like shutting yeah. down the sofa mm -mm. and everything. I think that's so rude. Like give it five minutes. You know, this is in the middle of the house. People, it's like, like we're leaving the party early. So you really do, you have to get so stinking specific about Well, that's a tough one, um, Caitlin, because is that, like, when you're doing, are you doing a two-hour party? Two hours. So this is at the end of the two hours, or just this is, like, if they've Usually ended Usually it's at or... the end of an hour and a half, because we're trying to finish in an hour and a half, and then they move on to cake. But in their mind, they're like, ooh, we're done sewing. Right. Which is fine, and I definitely understand that. But, like, don't be clanking sewing machines around while they're yeah. eating birthday cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and like well, and one thing I tell, so yeah, one thing I do tell my parents when we do a party and I don't do a whole lot of so fun parties, but with bricks, I tell them to plan their party for two hours, but our portion is an hour and a half. And so that way, if we do need to start some of that, it, the, the parent has the expectation that we are, or they'll put us in a different part from where they're eating cake. Yeah. Well, right. and I think one time I was there and they just started, you know, anyway, somebody, you have to think about all the yeah. things. You think it's common sense and it's not, you know, there's and, none. And even if they're like respectable, great people in their mind, they're tired or they're thinking about what they have to cook for dinner. Or they thinking about whatever there is going on in their life after they're not thinking I need to be, you know, respectful and lovely at this person's house, you know, yeah, or whatever. I mean, you know, I get, I had an issue too, where my staff, I was out of town and they were working and they were talking about me, <gasps> talking about me oh. at a venue that I've been doing day camps all summer. And that venue got upset. They're like, Caitlin, we really respect you. You know, we really like you. They let you know. She told me because she's oh. like, we really like you so much. And like, I just wanted you to know that they were saying some stuff. And I was just like, well, that aside from being upset about it is so unprofessional. Like, you oh my to God. You know, and like they yeah. told them that j they were just talking about everything and they were saying, you know, talking about the studio and they're like, oh, if Caitlin can afford to get a studio, she can afford to pay us more and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, you don't <laughs> understand. Like, y'all don't know what I have going on. Wow. In my life. And, you know. What did you do, Caitlin? We had a meeting and I told them, I was like, you know, if there's going to be shop talk, that's fine. There is with every job, but it's not acceptable to do it at school. And I was sweating bullets. I was so nervous to say that. But I was, and I don't was bite the off. hand that feeds you. Good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was don't, really hard, but and I think, they don't need to be talking about you though. That's awful. Well, it is awful, but you know what? I mean, I was just trying to be understanding. I was like, I probably did that about other bosses. That's fine, <laughs> but yeah. just don't do it. Where yeah. <laughs> basically, these relationships that I've built with people, you know, that's what those schools are. I mean, those are our relationship. Don't talk about anything. In front mm -hmm. of so super crazy. Can I just ask you, going back to the birthday parties. So you mentioned um, an hour and a half for the birthday parties. So how many kids is that included? Because I'm doing parties for 10 kids and I'm kind of struggling with me and another tutor. Okay. I'm struggling getting projects completed within the two hours. So that's 10 kids. So how many are you are you doing for like an hour and a half? How many kids? Me? Yeah, or Lacey okay. well, or any. So yeah. we do a lot of parties and ours are included in the package is 10 kids. And I'm okay. not going to lie to you. It is like a marathon. Yeah. It is power sewing. I mean, I yeah. put the yeah. presser foot right where they need to sew. I'm like, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> oh, I love that because I just thought I was the only one. I thought it was too. That's why when you guys said you were finished after an hour and a half, I was like, what? What am I doing so wrong? <laughs> Honestly, you prep the project yeah. so that they're barely even selling anything. 
everything's cut everything is ready to go if there's a strap it's made of webbing or it's made before the party whatever it Mm -hmm. is like there aren't i think as many expectations of kids like learning how to sew at a birthday party Mm -hmm. it's an activity that they go home with something and if you don't want your hour and a half to be super stressful then you prep the hell out of it um and then also know that that last half hour for me is while they're eating if people aren't done the two of us are in the back yeah and handing it to them as they walk out the door yeah okay yeah and another huge thing that 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 i started to do um i've actually started to tell the parents that it's going to be really crazy because um, in the beginning, they would start to get nervous and they would come over and help, yeah. which is actually not helpful. So I just started telling them, I'm like, hey, just so you know, about halfway into this, it's going to seem like things are completely out of control and it's not. It's fine. <laughs> it's like this every time. <laughs> I love it. I, I have two birthday parties next weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So I must use that line next week. I'm like, you know, when you think. I don't want to do one, one I have to. <laughs> this happens every time. <laughs> don't worry. It's so true, though. I never thought about, like, or letting you, them know yeah. that. But you're right, because then they, like, stand there and yeah. they're like, what can I do? Yeah. And then you're just like, no, 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 no. Don't even touch anything. This is so in control. It looks like it's not, but it is. Yeah. Oh, that's it was so huge. Sad. Caitlin, do you have them, do you give them parameters? You know, you want them to think that this wasn't, you know, a, a disaster. You want them to know, like, hey, it's just kids sewing. It's a birthday party. They're yes. excited. Like, this is what is to be expected. I think when... Do you give them the parameters of setup? What was oh, that? I'm sorry. I said I do you give them parameters as far as setup goes? Uh-oh. That's okay. Parameters you go first, Joanne. Setup. Like, when they don't lose a finger and there's no blood squirting all over the walls, I think it's a successful oh party. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that can happen as well. Oh, my God. Uh, what, um, Lacey, what was your question? Just parameters for setup. Um, that's the, I mean, we don't do many parties, but it's something I definitely probably need to explore doing more of. Um, but I've found that it's, it's hard, like when you go in a home, like maybe their dining room table shakes or, you know, how many, how many machines do you take? What do you tell them that you need in terms of space? We're doing one actually next week at a coffee shop. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. Nice. Personally, I push to try to be as in control of everything as I can. I try to tell them we need to bring our own tables. Um, Sometimes if they have concerns about their space, I have them send me photos or I run by usually just pictures. Um, and that's been really helpful. And tables, do you charge them to use your tables or do you pay your staff extra to load and unload? Those people give me grief about unloading and loading. I don't. No, we just bring them. So no, I started them. charging for my bricks tables and they gladly pay the $25. And honestly, it just covers the labor to get them loaded and unloaded. I mean, yeah, that's great. That- I feel like, I don't know, so, I'm but they're little kid tables. For a birthday party. So I'm just like, man, take the tables in. Should be. Yeah, and how much do you pay your teachers? You know what? I'm getting away with charge or with paying them 50 bucks. 50 bucks for wow. a two year party? Yep. But that's because I'm still sort of doing the prep for those. Uh, so they'll come and they'll pick up everything and it's already, you know, ready to go. So it's just their two hours of time and commuting. Yes. That's cheap. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. Well, no, I don't know. I mean, because I don't know. I pay 75 and then a piece. So it usually ends up being $150 of um, labor. I can't wrap my mind around it. I mean, you know, that's only two hours. And then it's like, well, shoot, for a class, they're getting paid used to be 35, but then they would get paid 75 for two hour party. I don't know. It is really stressful at those parties. So maybe that would be a good yeah. incentivizer to get them working on the weekends and stuff. I guess that's part now, Caitlin. Caitlin, did I hear that you got a studio? It's coming. 
Yes, we bought a house that has a property attached to it that will be the <gasps> studio. You did! I'm so excited! And it's going to be really a big deal. I think that's going to be the next step for us. So I'm pumped up. It's going to be a little bit, I mean, it's a garage right now. And so, you know, we have it's to run it. It's the one in Frisco? Super excited. It's Is the it one in Frisco house? It's in Frisco. That'll be awesome. Yeah, it's really cute. Um... And Lacey, are you doing any parties in your space or is that just office or classes or parties or are you just well, office space? Right. Okay. So our transition from like my house to, um, I wish I had video right now because I could, we actually have it set up for sewing right now. I'm in here in the office, but we are doing, um, we're doing homeschool classes in here now and we would love to do parties, but the building is owned by the city. And as of now, we don't have access to the building on Saturdays. So, I mean, we can come in, but I can't have the general public coming in. So we're still kind of in that same boat. But this was, I mean, in terms of affordability, I, there was nothing that could compare with this. So I couldn't, you know, it was, this was just kind of a no brainer. But, um, you know, we're definitely having classes in here, just no parties. All right. Cool. Um, well, those of you that need curriculum, there's 10 projects up on the Hip Stitch Academy website, ready to go, ready to go. Um, and Megan, um, listen, what about that preschool unit? When do you think that'll be ready to go? Well, we had talked about um, Labor Day, right? <clears throat> yes, and I've got eight enrolled in that class already. So I'm and, that, and that starts when? That Tuesday? That starts on yes okay yeah so that's but i don't need the full but megan i do not need the full unit like if right. i had three projects that would give me enough to prep my teachers okay so Is don't stress yep it's gonna be um, well sorry oh go ahead i'm sorry well for me honestly right now i'm gonna do hand sewing i'm gonna do some um textile stuff so things with yarn <clears throat> um, and I might even do some weaving. I have looms. I won't include that in the curriculum for Lacey because there's a lot of, um, although there's a lot of like handmade loom stuff, which I think is kind of fun. Um, I don't know. What do you think about that, Lacey? Are you pro weaving? I love, I love the loom idea. Um, I actually called the, pro the class and sold it as, I called it So Fun Junior uh -huh. Fibercraft class. Cool. Okay. So you could probably just call it a fiber craft class because when, when I went to the events, I can send you all the picture of like the marketing event. I'm just piloting it at one school this fall. And I think the, the motivating factor there was I have two teachers that are really motivated to do preschool because that's kind of their comfort zone. Um, and so what we've told the parents was that it would basically be a pre-sewing class where they're using materials, fiber, like fabrics and other fiber projects um, in a craft sense. Mid-semester, we may teach them how to straight stitch on the machine just so they get used to having a machine around, yep. but it would not be a machine class. Right. And we sold it as fine motor skills, learning, yep. you know, attention and focus, and they were all over it. So what yeah. ages are those kids, girls? Four and five. Ah! Yeah. I have had some five and six year olds in for camp and I have just found them so difficult. I yeah. mean, I had one five year old and she would rather sit under the table crying or yeah. call her sister names and Carson and try to draw on the walls <laughs> rather than learn anything to do with sewing. You know, I mean, I told her mother before she enrolled, you know, five isn't really too young and she's not going to have concentration levels for three hours of camp. And her mother insisted that she came with her older sister. But by Thursday, the older sister had told the mother, I didn't say anything, but the older sister was seven. And she told the mother everything that had been going on. Like she was kicking her. She was calling her. It was really bad. But like, she was just bored. And her poor brain couldn't actually absorb what was going on. She was like, um, you hear me? What year do you, what, 
do you have kinder is there kindergarten in Ireland? What is what's the first year of school? It's primary school is what it's called or yeah, it's it's like it's preschool. Oh no, primary school is like from from five years old. Oh, so then you have preschool is is before before okay. five year olds on. Yeah. Twelve is is primary school. Yeah, so I, I just found the five and six year olds are just for me have been difficult. You know, they just they didn't have the concentration levels at all. I don't know. And so are you off on junior? Is it gonna be three hours or is it gonna be like one hour blocks or no, what way will you work? Yeah, it's definitely one hour blocks. Um and yeah, I find that like for the three hour camp, if they've not gone to kindergarten here and you know, like for a full day of school, there's no way they're doing three hours of camp. It just doesn't work. And that's, and I've tried to have five year olds and that's exactly what happened. They don't have the attention span. So that's why this was, this will be one hour, really hands on, spending time, learning how to thread the needle, learning how to put fabric on the embroidery hoop, learning how to, you know, do a straight stitch, learning how to kind of tie a knot with the embroidery thread, really simple stuff. And then going from there, learning how to make a pom-pom, like with yarn, learning how to, you know, do some basic weaving on kind of like a handmade weaving thing so that they have something that they can go home with, but that it's really simple and repetitive and they learn the fine motor skills, you know, through doing all of that. Is that kind of what you had in mind, Lacey? I mean, we've talked about it, but just kind of making sure. We're yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if Megan, you saw the, the projects that one of my teachers kind of put together. Mm -hmm. One of them that I thought was even neat is that plastic, um, you can't. know, it's like where they do the, what, yeah, it was, I mean, the things that I even thought maybe were too, I mean, not, the parents kind of went crazy over them because it, even though it's very easy and simple, it does play into the fine motor work, the attention and focus. And also they, the project turned out really cute. I mean, like the felt purse was darling. Um, you know, and then we did a tooth fairy pillow that was so cute. Uh -huh. um, you know, just little projects like that, that, you know, the kids, they, and another thing that we really talked about is these projects with preschool, they need to be taking home a project pretty regularly. Otherwise they lose interest. Yeah. So yeah. keeping those projects small and, um, you know, the kind of the take home length of time pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, Are you and I charge think the same. What'd you say? Are you charging the same for those preschool classes? Um, you know, this was our first semester, so I charged one ninety nine for twelve weeks, and I'm uh, I pay the school that particular school ten percent of our revenue. So I'm not making bank, but it's giving me an opportunity to figure this out before we roll it out on a larger scale. And just figuring out if this works for us. And I do think the preschool part has got to remain affordable or the parents are not going to do it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. My, I think my class that I'm going to do. Can I ask you Sorry. Well, I was just going to say that my, I'm charging roughly the same as what I would for the after school because that's kind of the going rate. I need to wear Sorry, there's a delay, I think. Uh, my internet's been acting weird in the last 10 minutes, too. Um, <clears throat> anyway, anywhere between 18 and $21 is usually what I pay. I charge for classes at my studio. For the classes at the school, I might charge a little bit less for the pre-K because I think some of the other classes charge the same. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah. So if you got other other things that you are in need of, let me know. Um, is there anything else that anybody wants to say or talk about or? Can I just ask? Yeah. Can I ask about um, 
have you ladies ever like built a workshop around like special needs adults so like adults with learning disabilities you know like workshops that might run maybe like for six week period out of that in my area you know huh i have not <clears throat> i don't um i mean is it it's something specifically it would only be adults with special needs yeah i am i mean no i have low like there's a lot of adults looking to do the beginner oh, camp type course but i have also we there's a group you know around the corner that operates a daily workshop for adults with special needs so it could be like um adults with Down syndrome you know whereby they're fully capable and and fully independent in a lot of ways but they're also attending this workshop you know and they have these extracurricular activities that they take they take to you know just to engage them in in different crafts and different arts and stuff and i was just wondering if any of you have built like a curriculum around that um i haven't specifically but i feel like it's like anything else that you teach it's kind of learning about who's in your class and you know and i think any good class is figuring out who you've got and how to engage them at the level that they're at you know i feel like even for our summer camps monday is always like okay who do we have walking in the door and how are we going to teach them for the rest of the week you know what i mean like we're there an hour early because we know that if we don't it will be mass chaos and then there are weeks that we can show up at quarter to nine and literally the kids are great they've been here before they're high level you know of abilities and you just kind of have to read the week and i feel like for a weekly class it's the same thing that first meeting that first week you kind of assess who you've got and then tailor the class a little bit as you go i mean i think that's any good okay. <clears throat> okay yeah because you never know you know you just never know who's coming yeah. into class <laughs> even with yeah. you know high functioning no. regular adults you could have like someone walk in the door and you're just like oh you know or they're you know <laughs> we teach that beginner boot camp and there are weeks that it's like the teacher that's been teaching that she's like there's no way we're gonna finish this class is so slow they're so like little nitpicky about every little thing and you can't like get them to stop doing that but at the same time you have to manage whether they're gonna finish the projects or not in the allotted amount of time so I mean it's just always a new challenge any group of people that you have right I mean do you guys agree oh yeah yeah yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Well, thank you all so much. Um, we'll definitely figure out the next uh, call and I'll post it on there and let you all know. I think what I'll do is, is this a good time? Is this a good day of the week? Yes. What are your feelings? Oh, and this when is is it? This is good? Very good. It's, it's nine o'clock for Lacey and Caitlin, right? That's not too yeah. early. That's no. And then what about you? Um, Actually, um, I'm starting my after school next Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's probably this is going to be the wrong day for me. If we could move it to Monday or maybe Wednesday. I'm fine time. in the mornings, um, most mornings except Thursday. So I'm flexible. Okay. Caitlin, would Wednesday work for you? Well, it will. I do have my kids, and so that makes it a little bit harder. They go to preschool only Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, but, okay. um, yeah, I mean, I'll make it work. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll make it Wednesdays. How about... Um, you know, we'll make it like a repeating like third Wednesday of the month or something like that kind of thing at yeah. Eastern. What are you guys central? Yes. yes.
9 a.m. Central. Um, and then five hours ahead, of, right? So it's 2? 3 p.m. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. No. I can't understand. 10 o'clock or 9? So it's 9 o'clock my time. No, it's 10 o'clock my time, and you're five hours ahead of New York. Is that right? So it'd be three. Okay. Yeah. Joanne, it was nice to meet you. You too. And good to see y'all. Thanks, girls. It was nice to meet you. Hi. We'll talk soon. Bye. 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 I'm sitting here waving at the computer like you can see me. <laughs> Bye. Bye.